Hi there, it's Thursday and that means we are doing a live today. It's 12 or just after, one minute. <laughs> and we are trusting our cell phone networks in South Africa today because unfortunately connectivity has been a little bit of a challenge in my state this morning or today, the whole day so far. So welcome to all of you that are joining. Um, my name is Tanya Joester, Dr. T as most fondly call me. Um, and I'm coming live from my page Botanicomy. Alchemy, Soothing Botanic Ingredients, both on Facebook and on Insta. And then as soon as I have a better connection later today, um, let's put it into the universe. We're going to have a fabulous Wi-Fi connection again later today. I will be loading it back straight on to YouTube for replay as well as I normally do. So today is episode three. Um, so let's see as the people start coming in. Um, if you are going to mention your name, I am able to give you a shout out and say welcome. You'll see I am in a different location today compared to normal. Again, that's partly due to, yes, testing out whether a change is as good as a holiday, but more so because cell phone networks in my office, believe it or not, are non-existent. Um, so I very heavily depend on our fiber networks, and unfortunately, that is a bit of a struggle today. So new location, um, new devices, new uh, way of doing a live, hoping that our cell phone networks play with us today. Um, so welcome. We are going to be talking about a chemical constituent today, which to me um, is just clean. That's what I smell. It's what I experience in my skin. It's what my emotions feel when I think about this particular chemical constituent. I can see Zubaydah's logged in on Facebook. Welcome, welcome. I can see there's more eyes, which means there's more people than just one on. But if you want your name mentioned, please just put, a, put something in the comments. Give me a shout out. Let me know where you are dialing in from. Um, where the connectivity issues sometimes make you hmm, need your adaptive oil a little bit um, and a higher dosage to what you normally used to because <laughs> today mine is working hard. And let me tell you, Copahiva is also working very, very hard today. So today, oh, we also have um, Yum Drops on, fantastic, yay, 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 and we have Mulberry Holistics. I'm not sure who Mulberry is yet. Um, if you can just put your name in the comments, that'll be, I think I just, yep, that'll be absolutely amazing. Just put your name in the comments for me, that'll be so awesome. All right, so Dominique is obviously Yum Drops, <laughs> for those of you that don't know. And then Bev is also just logged in on Facebook. Welcome, welcome. So let's get started. Oh, we also have Sandra Govender. Good of you to join today. So it's episode three today. Um, and episodes one and two were about chemical constituents that are very prevalent in a lot of essential oils um, called eucalyptol. That was the first one, the 1.8 cineol, that very beautiful respiratory anti-inflammatory oil. And then last week we talked about another beta, um, another beautiful oil, beta or beautiful chemical constituent, I should rather say, beta caryophylline incredible what that molecule does for us in the body. I can also just see that Alka is logged in all the way from Belgium. Welcome, welcome. And today we are going to be talking about a word which I probably don't know how to pronounce myself perfectly either. It's one of those which, um, if you listen to people say it, probably is pronounced quite differently by different people. The way I say it is terpenin for all. <laughs> Terpenine for all. There are many synonyms. There are many ways that people say it. Um, so there we go. Mulberry is saying that she hasn't caught the first two of the course. And their recordings are always um, part of my YouTube channel. So I could definitely, I will at the end of today's session, as soon as I'm able to upload this to YouTube for replay, I'll also add it there. But there is a playlist. So all the chemistry episodes do go into that specific chemistry series as well on my YouTube channel. And you can always go and watch the replays there, of course, as well. So um, this terpenin for all, <laughs> just notice at that last word, it's called all. All is always significant of an alcohol. And if one of my favorite followers logs in today called Quibus, he's going to say yay for alcohol. He li really likes his beer. Um, but unfortunately, the all, which relates to the alcohol, specifically in the chemical constituents, in other words, the backbone, um, the, the function, the, the functional group, um, the alcohol, is not going to make you drunk. It's not going to make you tipsy. It's not going to have that effect on you at all. I can also see that Trish has just logged in. Welcome, welcome. So the alcohol functional group 
especially if you're part of a religious group that is very much against using alcohol, please note that when you're using essential oils that have got functional chemical constituents in their part of the alcohol group, it's definitely not going to have anything to do with the alcohol that you are forbidden to use. All right. Um, that's definitely an important point. <laughs> so they are safe for you to use. Um, and then also those that are trying to stay away, for, away from alcohol. So it's just the functional part. It's because of the um, it's because of where and how the, the molecules are sitting in that backbone. Um, that is the reason why we call it an alcohol. So we also have a first timer called Sue Kutsia on. Fantastic. <laughs> She's saying, hey, Dr. T. She already knows my favorite name. So there we go. Um, the properties of an alcohol containing constituent. So firstly, the alcohol group is an oxygen atom, which is bound to both the carbon backbone on the one end and a hydrogen atom on the other end. So I can see that my Instagram on my one device keeps on dropping. So I'm just going to keep on tapping on the screen and hope that I don't lose you on Insta. So that is why it's an alcohol group. It's because of where and how the connections are sitting in between basically the um, the backbone, the, the molecules in that specific backbone. The properties of the alcohol containing constituents as a group, I can also see Zubeda's just logged in, welcome, welcome, and Bev, in just in case I didn't say hi. I think I might have. Yes, now I'm pretty sure I said hi to Bev already. <laughs> so basically, they are very relaxing. Um, they also help uh, soothe anxious feelings. They, when you're using them aromatically, sorry, so that's when we're using them aromatically. And topically, they usually have repellent activity. So when we're dealing with a lot of insects, for example, or cleansing properties, that's probably the one that this molecule is known for best. It helps the skin to look young and healthy. And when you are going to be working with a tested pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical grade essential oil, where you can get the lab results for, um, then obviously it's going to also be used internally and it can support the circulatory system and calm the nervous system down. Now that is for the group of alcohols together, right? That's the general properties that they have. Now there's many of those molecules that end with all. So geranial, for example, there's another one which we find in other essential oils. But today specifically, we are going to be talking about a monoterpene alcohol, which we also in short, call it a monoterpenol. You see, it's all these different pronunciations. I can see that Kim Turk has also just joined on Insta. Welcome, welcome. Um, but the terpen 4 all is what we call a monocyclic. So one ring. Remember last we had a bicyclic, right? So it was two rings for the beta caryophylline. So this week we're dealing with a molecule that has one. I forgot to do the, the artwork image for you to show it what it looks like today. I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll post it into the, into the comments after the session today when I've done my little bit of art for the day. But it's monocyclic. So it's a single ring as part of the backbone. And it's a monoterpenoid alkene alcohol. And it has different isomers. And there's um, different isomers of this specific molecule in different um, essential oils. R and S, those are usually the isomers. Um, and a few episodes back, I actually talked about the R and the S, and that's how they usually know when an oil has been adulterated, because it's always like right hand and left hand, and nature never produces it in 50-50. <laughs> so usually, um, there's also different ratios of the R versus the S molecule in certain oils, um, but it's, it's, it's the isomers, so there's different versions of it. And mostly, the four um, or the terpene for all, specifically as a part of um, the alcohol containing constituent molecules, as a group, they have particular very strong antibacterial, antifungal, antiseptic, immune stimulating, tonic general stimulating, as well as balancing properties. So you will understand why um, this particular chemical constituent is an incredibly powerful one, not only to support you physically in your body, um, but also emotionally, specifically when we're talking about the balancing. And I definitely needed that today, dealing with all this beautiful connectivity issues that I am dealing with. So while there are various different alcohols, so the geranial, for example, which we find in other oils, which we'll speak about in future um, sessions, um, something like linalool is an alcohol, and that is very um, calming, all right? But the, and very sedative, for example, but the terpenon for all, which is the one we're talking about today, um, is incredibly uplifting. 
So that's really amazing. And I can see there's a lot of people trying to join my video today. <laughs> Maybe in future I'll explore that idea. Not yet. I'm not ready for that yet. I can also see Andri Boerta has just logged in. Welcome, welcome. And there's also Bev Armorod that's just logged in. That's a new Bev. So now we have two Bevs on Facebook. May get confusing. I'll try and remember all the surnames. So what we learn from the guides that they write, write for medical professionals is that specifically this molecule terpenin 4 ol um, is a very non-irritant molecule actually, and it's also non-allergenic. Um, and it possesses only a slight toxicity, particularly if you are sensitive to that molecule. It's not mutagenic. In other words, it, it's not been known or scientifically shown in any of the research studies to date to cause mutations in your genetic material. And it has demonstra demonstrated in vitro test tube, so various cell culture lines, um, that it has anti-tumoral activity. And this is very easy to test actually in, in lab experiments because most of the, the skin and um, various cell lines that they use are, they generate or they, they replicate, shall we call it that, for very many generations. That's why they become a cell culture line because you can regenerate, add new media, scrape them off, go through the whole cell culture process. Um, but the way they, they stay alive for so many generations is because they have become a cancer cell line in sense. So these, um, when you use oils or um, a combination of different chemical constituents then in experiments where they test them on very many um, of these cell lines that do, um, they have the ability to, to proliferate uncontrollably, right? So very many generations. So when an essential oil prohibits that, it starts to show that it has anti-tumoral activity, which is really, really exciting. Um, and then also if you look at specifically cell conditions, um, the, this particular molecule is known for having cell modulating properties. So skin sensitivities here are really going to benefit from using oils high in this chemical constituent because particularly it actually reduces the edema. Now edema is water retention, right? So the watery bubbly kind of things, and it can be very teeny or, or quite a large amount. Um, I tend to get edema when I have a skin irritation because of a, a contact situation for something that I am very sensitive to. Um, even mosquitoes, for example, I'm quite a, a reactant person to any kind of mosquito bite, particularly when they're in Portugal. For some reason, the strains of mosquitoes we have there, <laughs> I have an even larger antihistamine reaction to. Um, but basically, when there is those watery bubbles that collect on your skin because of a contact situation for something that you're sensitive to, I can see Veronica's just also logged in on Facebook. Welcome. Hello, hello. Um, the oils high in the turpin and four oils actually decrease that. So that is why I, in particular, always use oils high in that particular chemical constituent when I have been bitten by a mosquito, because not only does it decrease the itch that I experience, it also sort of decreases the likeliness that I'm going to develop that incredible blister with all those little water bubbles around it because of the heavy reaction that my body has, particularly against the, shall we call it the chemical or the poison that the mosquito pumps into you so that your, your blood doesn't actually coagulate. Um, so tea tree, which is very high in terpenol or terpenine for all is actually very high um, in, in the tea tree. And that is why I use particularly tea tree for those kind of situations. Let's look a little bit about the emotional side before we go into the particular physical studies that have been performed with oils that are high um, specifically in this molecule. So emotionally, um, it's always the, the, you've got to look at specifically which oils have that chemical constituent in a high prevalence or in a high ratio compared to other molecules? Because usually um, it sort of overshadows, and you'll see that when I talk about it today. The two oils which I'm going to mention today, which are very high in this particular molecule, are specifically tea tree, um, but also marjoram. Now, there's a lot of people that get confused between marjoram and oregano or oregonum because they are oils or, or plants that look very similar in the garden, but they actually have chemical constituents that is completely different from each other. Marjoram is more closely related to tea tree, for example, in the chemical constituents that it has in main format um, than it does to oregano. Oregano and thyme, for example, are more closely related. So if we then look at 
the, the cleansing abilities that both the marjoram and the tea tree has, it's as a result of the terpenin 4 oil. Um, and that particular molecule is also very cleansing to the emotions. So it encourages individuals um, to relinquish all forms of self-betrayal. Um, and this allows people to take advantage um, of their own stability and become more balanced. Because I think what tends to happen very often is the givers tend to give too much. Um, and then it, you sort of allow other people to take advantage of you. You're giving away your power in a sense. Um, so when you like, uh, uh, when you, when you tend to allow other people to take advantage of you, whether it be your energy, your talents, your time specifically, um, your energy is a big one for me specifically as well because I'm such an introvert um, and I need to guard my energy quite thoroughly because I do so many online sessions and, and usually that does draw quite a lot of energy for, from me. Using essential oils can be incredibly supportive and especially when they're high in the, in the turpentine for oils because they can assist you to go into sort of a purification status and it helps you to release toxic debris. Um, it helps you to set energetic boundaries. Um, and therefore, you will have healthier and more respectful connections because you're setting your own boundaries and you don't feel like, being, like you're being a victim. Um, you feel more empowered. You become more resilient. Um, and you feel a lot safer, which is a really amazing benefit from using oils high in this constituent. So closer relationships, feeling more connected. And whenever have we needed an oil with such amazing properties, Right now is a really good time, I'd say, after sitting in the situation we have been in the last 18 to 19 months. I've also seen that Himalayan Healing, I see you've also just joined on Insta. Please let us know what your name is if you want to share that in the comments. So on the emotional side, how we would be using these oils is aromatically, obviously, because that always powerfully affects the emotions when it's in a diffuser or simply by opening a bottle. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I actually have the third oil, in, um, which is also very high in it. I'm going to speak mainly about marjoram and tea tree today. But when I had these three oils together, and I opened all three together, although individually they smell incredibly different, when you open them together and you've got them together, you smell the incredible similarity. And it's because specifically of that turpin and four oil molecule, which is really, really amazing. So aromatically, you can inhale from the bottle or you can simply take a drop and put it in your hand. Obviously, rub your hands together, cup your nose and inhale deeply. And all I smell is clean. It just smells so incredibly clean. And being a microbiologist, that is a smell I really appreciate. Um, it's just something that makes me really happy. Pretty much like wild orange tea tree makes me just as happy. So topically, um, it's a really good place to apply it to the bottoms of your feet or you could put it to the crown of your head. On your pulse points, it's a really excellent um, place to put it, especially if you're trying to support your, your um, emotions in setting those energetic boundaries. Um, and then also over the heart area. And this is the actual reason why I decided on this chemical constituent today is because I broke my heart chakra blend yesterday. <laughs> The bottle, um, I dropped my entire little baggie with all my oils in that I use very routinely, um, especially during my morning quiet time while I'm setting my um, intentions for the day. And I dropped it and the bag is very protective, but unfortunately two of the roller bottles hit against each other and where the one was stronger and only the bottom part came off so it didn't leak out, it actually cracked my heart chakra blend um, and all of the contents spilled out and oh my word, it smelled absolutely amazing and everywhere in my house was smelling like this beautiful oil. But that particular oil actually contains marjoram. And I was quite interested to go and dig a little bit deeper about why marjoram is always included in particularly heart um, supporting emotions and conditions. And that's why it's actually part of the heart chakra blend. You will get the recipe if you go and watch my reels on my Instagram for yesterday. You can just go take a screenshot if you want to. Um, and you'll get the recipe there for the really amazing heart chakra blend as well. I can see Natasha's just joined. Welcome, welcome on Insta. So environmentally, how we could use these oils to support us is obviously for cleansing, right? Because they have all those antibacterial and antifungal and antiseptic properties, which we'll get to in a second. But emotionally, if you're going to be putting a couple of drops in a cup of filter water, for example, into a spray bottle and shaking up really well, because the oil and the water don't mix, to use as an air freshener or as a spritzer in your environment, it's going to have that emotional benefit as well. And then you are going to be able to use it aromatically in a sense then, of course. 
When we start looking particularly at the concentrations that the turpin and for all is present in tea tree, it's usually between 20 to 60 percent, depending on who you're using, which brand you're using, in other words, um, and also where the plants are being sourced, because that very heavily affects the constituents. But please note that tea tree is one of those absolutely amazing oils. It's very high, if you think 60 percent um, in certain of the brands specifically for the turpin and for all but it has up to 92 different constituents in there. So a lot of the, the scientific studies where they know that turpin and fall oil is um, responsible for a majority of the physical benefits, many of the other molecules that are in there in a smaller concentration are definitely going to play an important role as well. I can also see Catherine's just logged in. Sorry you're late, you don't stress, you know where to go and find the replay, so it's all good. Thanks for joining in anyway, it's brilliant. So the marjoram has less. Oh, sorry. Let me just first finish my notes here on the tea tree specifically. So tea tree is renowned for its cleansing and rejuvenating effect on the skin, but also the immune function, particularly when you're using a pharmaceutical grade or an, a tested grade essential oil that you have lab results for, because you can then use it internally. And then you are going to be using it to support a healthy inflammatory or immune response. You can ingest it to protect against environmental and seasonal threats, which is really amazing. And usually the body systems that really benefit from using particularly tea tree is the immune system in the skin. And if you're still after the turpinin 4 oil molecule, but you don't necessarily have tea tree, then you can definitely go for the marjoram. Marjoram is actually a, a very gentle oil, um, and I will get to a second why it's probably a little bit more useful specifically when you are having smaller bodies like kids around, um, and it's very calming to them. Um, so we'll get to that in a minute, but the marjoram specifically has the turpin and four oil between, I'd say, 1 and 55% again, depending on where you're sourcing yours from. But it's valued for its calming properties and its positive effect on the nervous system, particularly when you're taking it internally. And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit in a little bit why or how I use my marjoram internally um, to support my immune system, basically, because that's what you're going to do when you're going to be consuming it internally. It also is promote, um, helps to promote a healthy cardiovascular system, system when ingested. So your um, blood flow, your heart, um, all of the, the, the moving juices <laughs> is really going to benefit from using specifically the marjoram. So those two are interchangeable, but they are going to have different properties because of all the other chemical constituents that are present in those particular oils. Body systems that are very heavily supported by the marjoram is cardiovascular, immune, as well as the nervous system. Let's talk a little bit more about the, t the, the tea tree because way before my essential oil um, sort of focus started a couple of years ago, I was using tea tree in my home very, very regularly. And I found a really amazing study this morning, um, which just confirmed why I used it so very often. It's actually been shown that a very low concentration, by the way, of the tea tree um, is 11 times more potent than phenol. Now, who can remember that little glass bottle they called it many different names through, through my childhood and my adulthood. Um, sometimes it was TCP, then they changed the name, then the name changed again. And I guess it was because of the phenol concentration that was in there. And we all used to gargle with that when we had a throat that was a little bit uh, itchy or you felt like something was coming on. Um, this particular study, tea tree, is actually more effective than phenol. Food for thought. How exciting is that? Um, Zubaydah, um, I will definitely answer that question after the live. And Almora, welcome, welcome. Good to have you on as well today. So definitely very good um, in the antimicrobial and the antifungal properties that we do find specifically in tea tree. But it could also be due to the other contributing factors from the other chemical constituents. So I don't believe that um, it's only the turpin and four oil that is having that particular effect. Yes, it's very powerful, but I think the other parts definitely contribute. And that is why we use whole essential oils, because our body is actually um, being scientifically shown to know what to do with a whole oil and it absorbs it a lot better compared to using only a particular chemical constituent. So the body doesn't always know what to do when it's just a single molecule on its own, but when it's with its component, with its cooperative components in a whole essential oil, um, your body actually do then does know what to do with it, which is really amazing. All right, so let's just remind you, so it's very antiseptic in other words, um, very good antibacterial and antifungal properties. There's also um, lots of research showing that it's antiviral. 
Um, and for all of those things, I think what attracts me most is it is so well tolerated on the skin. I have got an incredibly sensitive skin. Um, I tend to get a, a contact dermatitis quite often, depending on what it is that I've decided to put on my skin that day. And therefore, I'm very aware of toxins and I'm a little bit more um, wary. And I really look at labels and I read things really, really thoroughly. Um, but particularly the tea tree is very tolerated by the skin and most people are actually able to use it neat if you're using a pure essential oil and not something that's produced in the lab because then your body's not going to react so well to it. Um, but particularly tea tree, they've tested quite significantly because of the molecule terpenine for all. And this is the molecule which is very effective against certain superbugs in the hospital, the MRSA, for example. Um, there's also a lot of sh um, studies showing that it is really effective when you start incorporating it to support your immune system because it actually disrupts the membrane fusion procedure that needs to take place when you are infected by something like the influenza virus. So a very supportive mechanism to use when you're trying to support your immune system to fight off a certain virus or a fungal species or a bacteria the natural way. It's also very extensively studied in the veterinary industry, which I find amazing. Um, bovine mastitis, there's very many studies about that. Thrush in horses. Um, and it's also very good for a healthy inflammatory response because of the cell modulating benefits that it has. So very great when you want to prevent kind of um, a cytokine storm, for example, or when you want to prevent the pro-inflammatory molecules before you get the cytokine storm. Tea tree is very beneficial um, as a supportive mechanism together with some other habits um, if you incorporate that. And let's then get to the marjoram because I can see I'm running out of time here, but marjoram um, is very soothing and useful specifically for calming fussy toddlers. Um, and usually the way this is used is by putting it underneath the feet. Um, very, very porous there. And you can also use it as mom. <laughs> it's not just for the kiddos. When you're, when you're feeling very stressed and when you really just want to calm yourself down. Marjoram is not something you would associate with calming down, but it has actually got a very calming um, effect about it because of the molecules that are in there. And that is probably why it is included so very often with most of the recipes you do find to support um, and open and unblock um, a heart chakra. It just opens you up to the new possibilities. So um, tea tree and, mar <clears throat> excuse me, and marjoram are usually used to support the digestive system, the immune system, respiratory, cardiovascular, um, the urinary, urinary um, system because it's got all those antiseptic properties as well as infection and when you have an unhealthy inflammatory response. Um, and I think the edema with the skin, the contact dermatitis is something that stands out for me. Tea tree is something that I've used throughout my, my um, adult life because it's just been so incredibly supportive to me specifically. So I use it to clean in my lower toxin cleansers that I make at home. I use it as a hand sanitizer. Um, I use it in my diffuser very often. I use it in my vinegar water, which I use as a rinse aid in my washing machine for my washing. It's just one, one of those incredibly versatile oils and you can use it almost anywhere. Marjoram, how I use that is in my cooking. Um, Believe it or not, when you dry the marjoram plant, it actually becomes very, very potent. It's one of the few herbs that actually becomes more potent when you dry it versus when you're using it fresh. So I like to just put a toothpick um, and touch the insert of a marjoram oil and stir that into my food because it is incredibly potent in taste. Um, it's got a, a, a very soothing, docile aromatic, I'd say, compared to some of the other stronger herb oils, but it, the taste is very, very sensationally powerful. So um, put it in some salad dressings, for example. It's very good in savory dishes, meat, di meat dishes, um, because that's where marjoram has traditionally been used. So um, if I can just compare between the two, specifically tea tree and marjoram, both of them very high in the terpenin 4 oil, which has got the cleansing properties and the soothing properties specifically. Um, and then both of them have got other terpenes in there that are very cleansing. And I think the additional support from marjoram on the antioxidant side is because of some of the other chemical constituents that are in there, which we will get to in future series. So in conclusion, these are the two oils that you are going to be wanting to use for the terpenin 4 all chemical constituent um, and know that it's going to definitely work synergistically with the other molecules that are present specifically in these two essential oils, tea tree um, and the marjoram that are both incredibly high in the terpenin 4 all Cleansing to the emotions, to the skin and to surfaces.
So hopefully you got some takeaways today about these two very beautiful oils that are high in, in the terpenin for all. And I will see you all again next week, Thursday, for my next live for the next chemical constituent. If you don't know where to buy tested grade pharmaceutical grade oils, here I am. <laughs> Please contact me. I can get you um, some, some of these oils into your home. And of course, um, again, I got asked this question this week. Um, Tanya, all your education is for free online. Um, where do you make your money? <laughs> well, this is, my, this is my passion. I love teaching about the oils, but I do make my money by mentoring people to also partner their wellness businesses with essential oils. So if you're not in contact with a different wellness advocate yet and you would like to join my organization, there's always going to be some terms and conditions. Um, then obviously just pop in the comments, reach out to me and I will get back to you about that as well. Thank you for joining me today. I will see you all next week. Hopefully by then we will have our Wi-Fi connectivity sorted out again. Today I'm going to be using my tea tree or melaleuca and my marjoram for the emotional connectivity because I feel like I've lost that struggling so much with my internet connectivity. Thank you all. Cheerio.